viewers to the 11th episode in a series of 12 episodes that are focused on the August 2023 Mathematics Paper Team. So if you haven't seen the last 10 episodes, please go to our YouTube channel. you find a playlist that contains the solution to all the 12 questions in the Paper Team. Take note that we've also done Paper 1. So there is a playlist that contains a solution to all the 23 questions in paper 1. It is important that you revise as much as possible. As you revise, you notice that questions in mathematics remain the same, adjusting the numbers that changes, and the principles are the same. So let us look at question 11, which is from statistics, and it's one of the questions that I encourage people to answer because this question is relatively easier and the principles or the line of questioning remains the same. So question 11 leads, the ages in years of 100 patients treated at a certain health center on a particular day are given in the table below. So we have age in years, then we have number of patients. Question A, calculate the standard de deviation. So again, you notice that the first question on a question from statistics is C, calculate the standard de deviation. And the formula is usually given to you. And this question will 90% of the time be from the grouped data. So grouped in the sense that we know that we have the range of data points. So N1 that falls between 0 and 10 years, they are in one group, and these, there were 5. So what we know is, 5 of them, they are the ages ranging from 0 to 10. But we don't know who had 5 years, who had 6 years. That's why you see grouped data. So, if you are doing grouped data, when you go to the second page of the question paper, you notice that to be given the formula standard deviation is equal to for group data summation of the frequency multiplied by m the observation which is x squared divided by the summation of the frequency then minus the mean you square it then you find the square root of this then what you get is in the standard de deviation so the goal is to find the mean then we need to find x square then the sum of the frequency so the sum of the frequency is already given to us when you go to the question they are 100 d patients so when you sum all the patients they are 100 so summation of f this is 100 you also find it on the second part of the question so we know that so this is already known so what we need to find is uh, the other stuffs. Then we know that mean, the mean is given by summation of the x values divided by in the number, which is in this case summation of the frequencies. So what do we need? So from that data points that were given, we need to find the values of x. Then once we know the values of x, then we sum the frequencies. So we need the frequencies, isolate them, then we need to square the x's, then we multiply the value of x and f, which is fx, then we multiply the value of the frequency by the square of the value of x. So if you are going to use the root of the table, this is what you need to find. Once you find that, then everything will fall in place so quickly. So let us just find the values of x. So when you go here, the value of x is a middle value between 0 and 10. So what you do is 0 plus 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Similarly here, it will be 10 plus 20 divided by 2, which will give you 15. So that's how we find the values of x's. But it's going up to 60. So the middle value between 50 and 60 is what? 55. So you add 50 plus 60, then we divide by 2, you are going to find that the middle value is 55. So once you, you know how to find the value of x, you can come here 
and you notice that they're increasing by the interval of 10. So this is 5. If you go to the next one, the middle value is 15. Here, the middle value is 35. Here is 45. So you notice that they're increasing by 10, 10. So we need to have 15 here, then we need to have 25. We have 35. Then we have 45, then we have 55, like that. So this is how you make your table. Then we're going to have the totals at the bottom here, like this. Then this is the frequency. So when you go to here, the frequency is 5. So we have 5, 10, 25, 30, 20, 10. Okay, so I'll just take note of this. So I'm going to have a 5 here. Then we have a 10, then we have a 25, then a 30, then it was a 20, then we had a 10. So these are the values that I've just picked, the one that I'm circling. So these are the values that we have we've put there, we're just picking them like that. So after this point now, just to start multiplying. So I'm multiplying these frequencies with him. the the x's then you are going to find this but before we do that let us see find the square so i'm going to square the x's so it will be 5 times 5 so it is 5 times 5 it will be 25 then next is 15 15 times 15 it will give me 225 so this is 225 remember i was squaring the value of x which is the same as in x times in x is x square then we are going to have 25 times 25 it will be 6 25 then it will be 35 times 35 it will be 12 25 remember the calculator is allowed then we have 45 times 45 it will be 20 25 then to be 55 times 55 which will be 30 25 like that then next you start multiplying is x times the frequency so that's what we are saying 5 times 5 we are going to have 25 here then we can do 5 times x square we are going to have 125 here so that we finish this line 125 then we are going to have 15 times 15 multiplied by 10, it will be 150. So here we are going to have 150. Then maybe let me just finish. So it will be now 25 times 25. So we are going to have 625. Then it will be 35. I'm going down now 35 multiplied by 30. So it's going to be 1050, which is 1050. Then 45 times 20 it will be 900. Then to be 55 times 10, which will be 550. So we are done with this line. So next we move to now it will be 10, which is the frequency. We are now the frequency multiplied by this square. So it will be now 2 to 50. Similar next, it will be 25 times 625, which will be 15, 625, then 36, 70, 15, which is 30 times 1225. Then we have 20 times 2025, we are going to get 4500. Then 10 times 3,025, which is 30,25, so it will be 30,250. So once you finish this table, you are good to go. Then you just find the total. So, so if you sum the frequencies, this is 100. We looked at this. Then the next thing that we need to find is this one for us to find the, the, the mean. So when you sum this one, you are going to get 3,000. 300 then lastly we sum the last one which is this one which we need it will be 
one, two, five, five, zero, zero, like that. Once you do that, you have what you're looking for. So at this point, we have, we can find the mean. So the mean bar is equal to, now the summation is three, three, zero, zero, divided by 100. This is 100. We've talked about this one. Then this is in this one, which is the sum of the f of x. So after this, we just come and simplify this one to be just 33. So 33 is the mean. So we know now what the mean is. The next thing is to find the standard deviation. So now the standard deviation, SD, will equal to, if you look at this, what is this? The summation of this is this one at the corner. Then we know what this, we know what this is. So now at this point, we just say now the square root. So we have 1, 2, 5, 5, 0, 0, divide by this, which is 100, then minus 33. Then this 33 will square it. What we're going to end up with is the square root of 12, 5, 5, minus, uh, if we multiply 33 times 33, it will be 10, 89. So if you find the difference, we're going to discover that this difference is nothing but 166. Then the square root of this is 12.889. So now we need to give this to three significant figures, which will be 12.9. 12 12 so 12.9 is the standard deviation. So this is how you answer this question to get the 60 max. Question B, answer this part of the question on a sheet of graph paper. Using the table above, copy and complete the cumulative frequency table below. So if you look at the cumulative frequency table and this is one mark so what it means we're just adding everything below so like for example the first one how many patients were below zero there was none because here it's greater than zero and less than or equal to ten so we had five then how many are below ten there are five here that's below ten then how many are below twenty so it should be ten plus five which is 15. How many are below 13? So it will be 25 plus 10 plus 5, which is in equal to 40. So this will be 40. Then next, how many are below 40? So it will be 30 plus this 40. So it will be 70. Then how many are below 50? Below or equal to 50? So it will be 20 plus here the 70 that we are here, which will be. 90. How many are below 60? So it will be 90 plus 10, which is 100. Then you would have completed that table and get that one mark. Luma numero 2 of beam using a scale of 2 cm to represent 10 units on each x axis for x is greater or equal to 0 but less or equal to 60 and y is greater or equal to zero but less or equal to 100 draw a smooth cumulative curve so what we need to do is just transfer this information on the graph so i'm going to go to the graph so if you look at the graph i've already labeled it so that i don't waste much of your time so what is key is ensuring that the graph is properly labeled so what we have we have the edge so this is the edge then we have the number of patients, which is the cumulative frequency. So, and this is the y value, and this is the x value. Okay. So now, you take note that the x value lies between 0 and 60. So, it's up to, I've gone up to 70, but it ends at 60. Then, the value for y is being between 0 and 100, so this is the maximum is 100. So at that point, we just now start plotting. So we have 0, 0, which is the first point. So you see, starting from 0, then 10, 5. So 10, 5, which is somewhere halfway here, 10, 5. Then we have 20, 15. So 20, 15 is somewhere at the middle here. Then we have 
30,40 so 30,40 which is somewhere here then we have 40,70 which is somewhere here then we have 50,90 which is somewhere here then we have 60,100 which is at this point so once you have these points then it's just a matter of joining them so at this point you just need to use your pencil and join these points using a smooth line something like this so once you do that then you are good to go you would have answered that question that you are required to answer which is the three marks then Loma number three showing your method clearly use your graph to estimate the same interquantile range so the same interquantile range i will use this space so same interquantile range is given by half of the interquantile range so the interquantile range is given by q3 which is the third quartile minus the first quartile like this so at this point what you need to do is you need to get your ruler and look for the 25th percentile so 25th percentile because these are out of 100 so the 26th percentile is just 25 out of 100 because 26 is 0 0.25 or 25 percent multiplied by 100 which will just give you 25 then you look for that number so you get your ruler bring it and look for where 25 is so 25 will just be halfway between 30 and 20 somewhere there then you can draw your line dotted line somewhere here so you make your dots then after that once it meets here you get your your other your ruler then you put it like that then you bring down this points down here you notice that this will be approximately 25 then you do the same you get your ruler go to the 75th like here then you draw your line until it, it touches the smooth curve somewhere here then once you do that then you get this ruler and bring it down here then you do the same until it touches down then you make your estimates so your points will be something like it down here until it reaches it down so your estimate will discover that these points will come to around about 43 42 in that line so this will be the q3 then this will be the q1 so you come and substitute here so it will be half multiplied by 40 about 43 minus 25 which will give you uh, about so the difference there will give you 8 that's what will be the difference then you multiply by half so this will give you about 9 so 9 is the same quartile range so depending on your accuracy you might 8.5 or 9 but it should be around 9 when you round it off once you do that then you get these two marks then you are done with this question then you get the 12 marks so i've taken a bit longer because I want you to understand so if you understand this principle you should be able to take about 12 to 15 minutes which is okay for you to finish four questions in 60 minutes then the other 90 minutes you dedicated to section e. so join me in the next episode as I look at the last question which is question 12